What's up, YouTube? I um, wanted to talk a little bit about Sun Edison, ticker symbol S-U-N-E. Uh, previously did a video, uh, kind of embarrassed myself um, when I referenced like the, their backstory and uh, how they came into be in 2012 time frame. Um, and the people that criticized it were right, so I went ahead and pulled the uh, video even though it got a lot of hits, which uh, that was cool. But anyway, um, today, uh, Sun Edison did exactly what I've been preaching to everybody to get out. Uh, it dropped big time from $2 all the way to $1.49 at the end of the trading session, then down to $1.39, $1.40, where it is right now. Um, why do I hate this company? Why do I care? Well, I've been investing for 44, so probably the last 25 years, um, start out mutual funds and everything, and uh, I've witnessed the boom and bust, the, uh, the you know, the dot com, uh, the sub mortgage, uh, subprime mortgage crisis, um, CDOs and whatnot. Uh, I've seen a lot of companies, uh, uh, you know, uh, screw their investors, the retail investors like uh, MCI WorldCom, uh, Enron. Um, I remember when the telecons got destroyed and some of them didn't make it out and some of them recovered. Um, but my point is, uh, I'm not the know-all, do-all. Uh, I don't claim to be a genius. Uh, I only follow, follow certain things. Uh, so I'm not going to comment on like a pharmaceutical and where it is on their, you know, stage three uh, wonder drug or anything. But uh, I do pay attention to the energy sector. That's where I like to do all my research. And uh, when Sun dropped from like $34 uh, to about the $12 point, I was like, what's going on with this company? You know, it's a, it's a US based company out of Missouri. What, what's, the, what's the deal here? At that time, uh, I was invested in uh, Yingling, which was uh, at the time the biggest solar company in the world out of China. Uh, they were uh, undercutting everybody. They could make panels for cheaper than everybody. And, and then the governments for various countries put up, uh, you know, these. Uh, taxes uh, for importing their panels, you know, to slow them down, but uh, I was like, well, damn, you know, what, what's the deal, and um, as I followed Solar more and, and, you know, was studying all the players in the field from Canadian Solar, which is Chinese, by the way, and, and all the way to First Solar, Sun Edison, uh, who else is there, uh, Solar City, Trina, um, you know, Everybody was hooting and hollering that the reason why these Chinese companies were falling behind against the U.S. companies because all the money is to be made in the downstream uh, markets, you know, the, the residential. I'm like, well, I did a little investigating. Uh, actually tried to find out how much it costs to get solar. And I remember I was quoted, um, this was about a year ago, a year and a half ago to be exact, that it would cost me approximately thirteen thousand dollars to get panels put on a house that's two thousand square feet, and I'm like, well, how do they come up with these costs? Well, we're talking the cost of the panel panels themselves were about seven hundred dollars, but all that other cost was the installer. So I got to thinking, well, man, maybe solar's not the place to be as far as investment because it seemed like the only ones making money are the installers. And and then and then I realized too, how how are these companies thriving and and, and booming? Well, especially in the U.S., uh, you got U.S. companies that took advantage of the, the government subsidies. And like I said in my previous video that is now down, uh, a lot of these companies, they would, they would uh, underbid everybody else. They really didn't care about what the winning bid was, like long term is it profitable for them. They just wanted the bid so they could put it on their books that, hey, look, this is the business we're generating. This is uh, our future prospects. We're growing and growing. What n no concern at all in the world for is this is this a, a wise play? You know. 
basically, I was like, man, I, it seems like a house of cards to me. Um, I, it got me to thinking some of the, the U.S. Uh, solar companies were in big trouble because I noticed the trend was with the, their debt kept growing. Now, now, granted, not all of them, but uh, a majority of them, their debt kept growing and their cash reserves were shrinking. But it was all about the hoopla of, you know, the potential, you know, uh, you know, oh, it'll pay off, you know, it, it'll, it'll work itself out and, and they'll be profitable. But I wasn't seeing that. And when I, got, I took a deeper look at Sun Edison around 12, after it already had a big drop, you know, worked its way down there from 34, I was like, well, wh what's their deal? Well, their deal was they created two yield coals, and at the time it was kind of no novelty. There wasn't a whole lot of yield coals out there. At the time they started up, uh, there were two yield coals, and I think there was two others, and now there's more. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, if this is such a great thing, why why haven't other businesses used it? And I thought it benefited the partners, you know, the two companies, or three, in this case, three companies, um, Terp and uh, GL, DL and, and Sun, where they can move assets, make it appear like, you know, they put, they can package up stuff, on transactions, put a bow on it, ship it over, and make each other look good. And to me, that's kind of like, let's say, a uh, sport analogy here. You got an owner that owns two baseball teams in the same league. You don't think this creates an issue? And, and I'm not even saying they're not profitable. But let's just say, you know, you got one owner controlling two teams. Is that going to fly? That's not going to fly. Well, it kind of applies the same principle here. You got a company that's got two yield calls that they're, they're funneling money, funneling deals, funneling everything back and forth to prop themselves up. That was a big red flag. But the biggest red flag was like, uh, like I'd mentioned before previously, you know, it's okay for a company to not have uh, any profit in the beginning and a large uh, debt issue, as long as they're showing that they're reducing their debt going forward, or going forward quarter quarter, and they, um, their revenue is growing and they're reducing their debt. Well, if you look at Sun, that hasn't happened. They lose money every quarter since they've pretty much been in existence as Sun Edison. Um, their cash reserves have dropped. Uh, they've extended themselves way out to where they're hemorrhaging, hemorrhaging the, their, their business model. And I think there's no recourse but for them to save the company is to go bankrupt. Now, I think that also the, the two U calls are in big trouble, but they need to re hit the reset button. And that's the whole idea of bankruptcy, right? Reorganization, reset, and, and restart. Well, I tried to express this to many, many longs, and they never really gave any prudent uh, counter argument other than I know it's going to go back up. Uh, uh, the charts, you know, this used to be a $34 a share company. Uh, it's got to go back up. It's got to bounce. I'm just waiting on the reversal. Um, it's too big to fail. Uh, they're too important to the future of solar. And, and all these are like fluff statements because you can't back up anything you're saying. But all along, I pushed, told people, you need to sell. This is a company of bad mood you. It, it's got, you know, all kinds of things that they're doing backwards wrong. Uh, and it all started with that, when they made that purchase, what, 18 months ago for the uh, that wind farm uh, business? They overpaid for that. What was that all about? Then they made that other play on Vivian. We're, we're willing to overpay for that. And then got called on it. And then they wanted to readjust because, oh, shit, we can't afford it. What is that telling you? And now... As, uh, as of recently, you've got them uh, losing contracts, you know, their, their customers pulling out of contracts, Hawaii being the most obvious one. Um, they're not completing projects. They've got like a 20 to 30% completion rate over the last 12 months. That's horrible, you know? And then, you know, 
occasionally you'll get one one thing to hold on to to wrap your arms around. Well, the Chinese want to do a joint venture. The Chinese are in it for themselves, okay? They are not interested in propping up some other company in a joint partnership. They're all about themselves. And they, they could they could they could smell bankruptcy on the horizon for, for a son. So if they've got uh, inventory and uh, everything in China, they're getting it on a slice pennies on the dollar. You know what I mean? So you can't rally uh, around that. And China's pulling strings anyway because all the raw earth materials that come that that are, come out of the ground to build solar comes out of China. I don't know if you guys realize that. it doesn't come out of the United States. So. They were just taking advantage of a distressed uh, company that was in big trouble. And again, like I said, I've, I've preached, I've told people, you know, get out of the company. It is bad. I, I, I smell shenanigans. I see shenanigans. I call shenanigans, you know. But everybody shot me down. They make fun of the way I look. They make fun of my wife. They make fun of, uh, you know, uh, what was behind me at my house uh, because uh, I sell statues and, and, and the comics and sports and all that crap but that it was never about me it was always I mean it was never about the company it was always about me and what does that say you got no valid argument a lot of people lost money okay a lot of people lost money not just today uh, not just last week but this whole way and that, and I hope it is a lesson learned because greed's a bad thing you know no 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 company owes you nobody nobody owes you anything especially money for nothing do your research understand what you're looking at if they got problems with their warehouses where banks can't even quantify you know what exactly they have on the books I mean that's that that's been put out there does this not raise big time flags for you I'm sorry if you lost money lesson learned be thankful for your health, thankful for your life. Uh, you paid for this experience. Hopefully you got out, I hope you did, and that was the whole point of me, uh, you know, railing against Sun, that maybe I would reach uh, a couple people and they'd protect themselves and their assets and their savings, and it wouldn't turn into a nightmare on them. Thanks for watching. I'm sorry this happened to you guys, but it, it was it was a house of cards destined to fall and if you couldn't see that I don't know what to tell you is it and now well, one other little tidbit I'm reading on because uh, I, I uh, post comments on uh, seeking alpha and uh, uh, stock tweets the, the these supposed longs they don't give up you know another flag how can you defend leadership that doesn't have your best interest doesn't keep you in uh, 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 keep a dialogue going with its shareholders and uh, comes up with the excuse of, of a computer uh, glitch. Do you really buy that? Do you not hold them accountable? But you got people on these sites saying, oh, well, I'm just playing the reversal. What, what reversal, man? There ain't no reversal. The company is destined, if, if the company wants to save itself, it's going bankrupt. That's my opinion. It's going to go bankrupt. I think the Yokos are in trouble too. I don't know how this plays out with them. If they can salvage anything from Sun, if they're going to gut Sun, if they even have that type of leverage. Um, I promise you, they're each out for themselves. Uh, I don't see Sun as a buyout candidate at all. You don't buy out a, comp uh, a company that has way more debt than it does an asset in cash. You don't do that. You know, you take on some debt. You don't take a, a company that's hemorrhaging, bleeding debt on a daily basis. You don't. You don't. They, they go to rest, they go to die. That's what Wall Street does, you know? So, really think about what you guys post and look in the mirror and acknowledge. Do you really believe that the hype you're... Now, I granted, some people uh, are going to post uh, garbage and fluff to try to get out of their position. But stop blaming, looking for excuse why you made a bad trade. Hold yourself accountable. That's another problem with today's society. Nobody wants to talk to anybody anymore. Everybody's got a text. Uh, they don't even know how to talk, uh, communicate with people. And, and nobody holds themselves accountable. That's all I got. I'm not going to lecture you anymore. I just, I'm sorry you guys lost money. Those that got out, kadoos to you. Um, 
it's just just a this was just a bad event and 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 stock history and uh they'll do studies on it like they did on enron and mci and and uh subprime prices thanks for watching later bye